The early 1940s, an era smothered in racism. Segregation was widespread in the United States. Even its skies were reserved for one color. No African American had been a US military pilot. In 1917, African American men had tried to become aerial observers and were rejected. But in this turbulent period emerged a group of civil rights trailblazers, the Tuskegee Airmen, whose journey would rewrite history. In 1939, as tensions for equal rights intensified, civil rights organizations, the black press, and even Eleanor Roosevelt pushed the government to open doors for African Americans in military aviation. Responding to this pressure, President Roosevelt paved the way for black students to join the civilian pilot training program. The U.S. Army Air Corps took a bold step, establishing an aviation training program at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, one of the largest black colleges in the country. Tuskegee's very isolated. It's in the middle of this very racist state. The town of Tuskegee is divided. The white citizens don't want this operation there because it will mean more African Americans in Tuskegee. In 1941, with a million dollars set aside by the War Department, Tuskegee Army Airfield became the inaugural training ground where the first African American aviation cadets embarked on their extraordinary journey. The path ahead would be fraught with challenges. Racial prejudices and doubts about their competence lingered in the air. The document said that Negroes were uh, lazy. They didn't have enough sense. They had no coordination. And they lacked the intelligence to uh, handle sophisticated type of chores, like driving tanks or flying airplanes. And even if they did, they lacked the bravery to successfully engage in combat. This is ludicrous. However, in the spring of 1941, Tuskegee's budding flight program gained attention when First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt took to the skies with lead instructor C. Alfred Chief Anderson. Anderson, a seasoned pilot since 1929, guided the Piper J-3 Cub through a half-hour flight that left the First Lady impressed, cheerfully declaring, well, you can fly all right. She went on back to Washington and uh, told the president that uh, those kids, they can fly. The ensuing excitement mistakenly marked this flight as the program's beginning, even though it was already five months old. Eleanor Roosevelt, weaving her influence as a trustee of the Julius Rosenwald Fund, secured a $175,000 loan to support the construction of Moton Field. Tuskegee's flight program continued to soar into a promising future. The Tuskegee Airmen pressed forward. In April 1943, the 99th Pursuit Squadron ventured to the Mediterranean Theater of Operations in North Africa. This marked the beginning of a remarkable ascent, as by June 1944, the 99th had joined forces with three other all-black squadrons, creating the formidable 332nd Fighter Group. Operating P-47s and later transitioning to P-51 fighter jets, 332nd took on a critical role, escorting American bombers on missions over Italy. Their duty was clear, safeguarding larger bombers from German fighter aircraft. Germans realized that these young black pilots stayed with the bombers and protected them very, very effectively. And the bomber crews realized that when they were escorted by these black aviators, they were going to get to their target safely and get back. And that was the really the beginning of racial equality when the white bomber crews realized these guys protecting them were every bit as good as anybody could be because they were able to carry out their mission successfully. By war's end, 
they completed a staggering 1,378 combat missions, with a remarkable record of safeguarding bombers and only losing 25 under their protection. As recognition of their achievements, the Tuskegee Airmen earned 96 Distinguished Flying Crosses, 14 Bronze Stars, 744 Air Medals, and 8 Purple Hearts. The numbers, however, only scratched the surface of their impact. The skies were witness to their heroics as they downed 112 enemy aircraft in the air, another 150 on the ground, and left 148 damaged. Tuskegee Airmen were not only exceptional pilots and support personnel, they were also civil rights pioneers and role models. Despite the horrific, racist assumptions made by the War Department, which deemed them as mentally inferior to whites and incapable of handling the complexities of modern warfare, the airmen proved their worth and skill in combat. They earned respect and admiration from both allies and enemies alike. Their courage and excellence inspired other African Americans to join the military and pursue careers in aviation thereby increasing diversity and representation within the armed forces. Moreover, their collective efforts contributed to the public pressure and political momentum that eventually led President Harry Truman to create Executive Order 9981, a monumental mandate for the desegregation of the U.S. military. These aviators didn't just fly planes, they soared towards justice leaving an enduring legacy of courage, excellence, and honor. Their wings carried the hopes of generations, and their story remains a beacon, a reminder that even in the darkest skies, we can find the strength to break free.